Hi, my name is John Gibbons, and in this talk, I'm going to talk to you about pathological conditions that affect the hip and subsequently the groin. When I see patients, if they come to me with back pain or knee pain, lateral knee, medial knee, oop, groin pain, uh, even like central buttock pain, then I would always assess the hip joint to make sure that it is non-pathological and non-restricted because I believe symptoms could be located within the hip. Let's rephrase that. So maybe the cause could be within the hip, but the symptoms might be referred to another structure. There was a study done in 2003, and one of the questions was, can the hip be implemented with patients with back pain? And the study by Mitchell looked at different areas. So for instance, patients that come in, as I just mentioned, below back, buttock pain, groin, hip, hamstring, knee, okay, outside knee, inside knee, um, even lower abdominal sort of pain is one of the studies. And um, what they found was is patients presented with symptoms yeah, to these areas, but all of them were as a result of a pathology located within the hip joint. This was a study done by Mitchell et al. in 2003 and is called hip joint pathology. And most of the study, they did 25 arthroscopies of a hip joint and most of them had an issue directly with the acetabular labrum. And they found the majority had a tear. And if I just go forward to this one, this is a, a close-up view. If you're looking at, this is the ligamentum teres, that carries the blood supply. So this is the labrum, the acetabular labrum in here, of the hip joint. So they tend to tear at the anterior superior part of the labrum around the front part in here. So if you've got a tear within the hip joint, then potentially that could cause symptoms. I do have another video later on where I talk about the involvement of the hip and the psoas and the psoas and the glutes, yeah, and then the back pain and the knee pain. So you might maybe want to jump ahead at some point to that video as well. But for now, we're only going to discuss some pathologies. And um, if a tear is located in here, then the patient might have symptoms related to the labrum, as in like the clicking yeah, and the pain on weight bearing. It might lock okay, those type of symptoms. And they might have a dull ache within the groin. And they might think, oh, I've got a groin strain. But more often than not, the groin pain is probably referred from the hip. And more than likely, they might have a labral tear. I tend to see more women and men with labral tears. I, maybe because they might be slightly more flexible within the hip, so the ball in the socket ten, has a tendency to move a little bit. So when they stand and pivot, yeah, then it can actually tear the labrum quite easy. Even a lady with a Wellington boot on and a bit of mud, and her foot gets stuck, and she tries to pull the leg from the mud, yeah, and, and then in the meantime, she tears her labrum. The problem is the labrum is a piece of fibro cartilage, and if it tears, it's never going to heal. They can lay dormant and not cause a problem. Um, but if they do have one of these, then the diagnosis would be an MRA, which is a MR arthrogram, which would be better than an MRI. Okay, it's only because with the fluid, yeah, then it, it, it finds itself into the, like the, the smaller areas. So if it's a tear, the fluid will show itself underneath. So when I scan it, you'll see it. The problem is with an MRA, you have to have a guided ultrasound injection from the radiologist as well as having a normal MRI. Yeah, as it's like a two-part um, scan. And then that's where the tear would be. And if it is torn, then it depends on what you are presenting with. If it's a major tear, then it'd probably be in your uh, advantage to have that surgically um, dealt with through an arthroscopy. The problem is with an, a label tear, then a lot of times they can actually have this. This is called a femoral acetabular impingement, so it's known as an FAI. And a lot of people, if you've got a labral tear, you might have an FAI. And the most common FAI is what they call a CAM lesion. And you can see here this area of like purple, pink area in here. It's almost like, think about the neck. And it's like an extra thickening on the neck. And you can see this on X-ray. So if you've got an X-ray where they can take a measurement, they might be able to see this extra lump 
around you. So when the ball comes around, it can catch the labrum. So more often than not, if you've got a labral tear, you've probably got a cam lesion. If you have one dealt with, you should have the other dealt with as well. So this is called a cam, all right, which is part of an FAI. The one that's less common is a pincer, and you can see it overlaps here. Okay, either way, it's still going to catch and cause a problem. And the least common again will be this, and then this is known as a cam and pincer lesion, which again is part of an FAI. So you've got a restriction within the sort of like hip area. It's not gonna be like an osteoarthritic hip because the patient might be 25 years old. Okay, so you're gonna see these in the younger person rather than a person who's a bit older, where you perceive it to be a degenerative change, just like this next picture, all right? The problem is this day and age, you'd think this would be on a male or female 65, 70 years old, but I've actually seen patients where they are only 35 years old, yeah, where they've had hip replacements. So this would be a very degenerative left hip. You can see these bony spurs that are called osteophytes. So these are very painful, very restricted. So the person will probably have an inability not to do much. They might have back pain, they might have adductor pains, they might have groin pains, they might have pain anywhere. But in this case, they might not even simply be able to cross the leg over because of the pathological changes within the hip joint. Now, have a look at this picture. So look at the left hip here. Yeah, and look at the right hip. Look at the shape, what's happening in here. Okay, if I said this is typical on a boy who is nine years old, when I use the word typical, it's not typical in one respect. It is atypical because it's not very common. But you might find it's not a person who's maybe 65 years old. It's a boy, more than girls, who are around eight to 12 years old. And it's called, if you're not sure, it's called Perth disease or Perth's disease. And it's named after three surgeons, Leg, Carl Bay Perths, it's named after a guy called Arthur Leg, which sounds a bit strange, Arthur Leg, and then Jacques E. Calve and Georges Perfess disease. And commonly known as Perfs, yeah, potentially caused by a lack of blood supply, a, a vascular lack of blood death of tissue to the head of the femur, changes the shape to a mushroom sort of shape. And typically, child has a limp with knee pain. So if you have a friend who's got a boy who is nine years old and he mentions his knee, yeah, but then when the physiotherapist or therapist has a look at the knee, they won't find anything wrong. So then that's the time where they should do a, an x-ray of a hip joint where they're looking for this change. And then the idea would be that they would just keep an eye on it yeah, from time. Okay, so what I've done in this talk, I am covered too many. So I talked about a label tear. I've talked about FAI. We've got a cam lesion. Yeah, and a pincer and a combination of both. I mentioned an osteoarthritis, yeah, and I've also talked about Perth's disease. I hope you enjoyed the talk. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email or just leave a message for me. Thank you.